So let's go to PayPal, uh, paypal.com. Now, I just want to quickly mention one thing to you here. I'm sure most of you know me quite well by now. And um, one thing I pride myself on is that much like everybody here, I'm totally honest and straight. I've never hidden figures I've received or sign-ups to my list. In fact, you may well have seen the opposite. I've made tons of videos about incomes, about sign-ups to my AWeber. I have no problem with that at all because everything I said, I have done. However, that said, when I log in now, I actually am going to hide the screen from you. And the reason for that is it's nothing sinister. It's nothing, nothing Machiavellian. Those of you probably know, when you log into your PayPal, the first screen you see is actually incomes that you've received from people. I have no problem you knowing my incomes at all because I want to prove all the time that this business works. I do, however, feel that it's not quite right if you see people's names that have actually sent me you know, $27 a month from my membership site, let's say. So that's the only reason I'm about to hide what you're about to see. There's nothing, as I say, there's nothing sinister. I'm not trying to hide anything. Unfortunately, as you probably know, when you log into PayPal, that's the, I, that's the first thing you see, literally people's names. And you would see their names as well and their email. Actually, you don't see their email addresses, but you do see their names. And some may be even here on this webinar. So I just don't think it's fair for their privacy, really. Um, so I just wanted to say that it's nothing, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything from you here. So because of that, I'm going to ask Jeff to kind of um, step in here because for me to do this, I actually need to move my screen um, over to Jeff. And we're just going to go and share his screen. So are you there, Jeff? And can you hear me? Oh, wonderful. Jeff's done it already. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so... Um, can I just check that you you cannot see my PayPal screen at the moment, I believe. Could I just could you just confirm that? Thank you. And I'm only doing this, this will only be a second. I'm just going to quickly log into my PayPal and then navigate away from that page that shows you people's uh, actual names. And then as soon as I've done that, and this will take me about 20 seconds, as soon as I've done that, then we'll log back in. Uh, and then everything will be good. Okay, it's just logging in now. It's taking a couple of seconds, as PayPal always does. And still logging in. Shouldn't be a moment. Oh, I forgot to bring my coffee downstairs. I made a coffee during the break and left it upstairs. George, could you go and fetch my coffee? Um, okay, wouldn't that be funny if George came with a coffee in his mouth? Right. I've just... I'm in now. Yes, I'm glad I've done this because I can see lots of people's names here. So it just wouldn't be fair. Uh, okay, fabulous. That's now okay. So uh, I'm now going to... Go back. Thank you, Jeff. Wonderful. Thank you ever so much, ladies and gentlemen, for that. Brian Edwards is asking for one sugar, George. <laughs> right. Okay, we're back. Can you just can you see my screen? Okay, well, you should be able to see my PayPal uh, account now. Wonderful. Thank you guys for that. As I say, there's nothing you know Machiavellian. I love that word Machiavellian. It's a great word. Okay, so what we've done now? Let's just let's just focus again. Now I've now logged into PayPal. Now there's two things we need to do in PayPal. We actually need to create our link. And we can do that in a second. But there's something else that hardly anybody knows about in PayPal. And I'm going to share with you this little trick here. If you've ever bought something using PayPal, you probably know the process. You, you click on that Pay Now button, and uh, it takes a few moments to say your payment's going through. And then two things can happen. Either you can appear on a page that says your payment's been processed, thank you. And then there's a little link that's kind of hidden, if you ask me. I think it's very unclear that you have to click on to actually get sent to whatever it is you've bought. Now, I've always thought that that's really bad because most people don't know to click on it. It's not obvious. It says something like return to merchant. It's not an obvious thing to do. And as a result, what happens is a lot of people then email the person they bought something. They said, I paid for it, and I didn't actually get sent to the, to the download page. And it's because PayPal's not that user-friendly in this particular avenue. But there is something you can do in PayPal to stop this and that's what I want to share with you now because hardly anybody uses this and what this allows you to do is when somebody pays using PayPal they will automatically get redirected to your download page without them having to click on that little hidden link 
that says return to merchant and nobody uses this and it's a really great little thing to do and um, I'm actually seeing a lot of comments coming through saying my thoughts exactly I've experienced confusion with this before I know why do PayPal do this you almost want to say to PayPal just get in the head of us your customer and buy something yourself go through the process and see how confusing it is I'm amazed they don't do this Anyhow, <clears throat> excuse me, you can make it easier on your customer by doing as follows. Once you've logged into PayPal, click on this link here that says Profile. And as I say, hardly anybody does this. Uh, click on Profile, and PayPal do offer this facility, but it's, it's hidden. And uh, I just want to flag it up to you. I mean, you could write a little article or an ebook about this and sell this as a little product because this is information that nobody really knows. Now, one of these links here says Website Payment Preferences. You see, it's kind of hidden down here, isn't it? Uh, but it's towards the bottom under the Selling Preferences column. But it says Website Payment Preferences. We need to click on this. So let's click on that link, Website Payment Preferences. And if you're making a note, that's what you want to make a note of. Website Payment Preferences is the link that's in the Profile section in PayPal. And here... What, what is this saying? It's saying there's something called auto return. It says auto return brings your buyers back to your website immediately after payments. This is exactly what we want. Now when it says back to your website, it doesn't mean the sales page. It means wherever you want to send them to. So in this case, the download page. You're beginning to see sort of how it's sort of beginning to fit together now. Exciting, isn't it? Now, hopefully, for a few of you, a little light bulb went off there. You thought, oh, gosh, now I, now I sort of see why we uploaded the download page, because we're going to put that download page in here. You're right. We are. And I've said this a thousand times. We only need to do this once. That's the thing with a web business. We don't need to do this every single time. We do this once we set up a website, and then, then you just generate traffic. But the problem is, of course, doing all these little things at first can be what stumble most people, trip people up. Right, so let's go through this. So what we have here is auto return as an option. By default, it's off. We want to select it on, don't we? It's as easy as that. So auto return is now on. And now here, the return URL. Remember I was talking about a URL a moment ago, the actual address of something online? This is where we want to send somebody after they purchase. Now, I made a note of this, didn't I, a second ago. Here it is. So let me just click and drag and copy this. I'm just copying this, and let me paste it in here. There we go. So I've now pasted the return URL in here. Now, let me just mention something important here. If you have many products that you want to sell, you don't obviously want your customer to be sent to this page necessarily every time because it might be a different product they bought and it wouldn't obviously make sense if they were sent to this page. What we've done here on this auto return page, this is the default page that we need to send somebody to. And this needs to be on to allow somebody, once they purchase, to be sent somewhere. Now, by default... I'm saying I want them to be sent to listbuildingwithchris.com download. That's great if you have one product. If you have two products, what you can do, and we're about to do this, is when you actually create the, the payment link that we're about to do, we can also choose a page for somebody to be sent to. That will overwrite this here. So don't worry if you're thinking, and I'm sure a few are thinking, well, I might have two or three products. Every time you create a payment link for each particular product, and you'll have a different link per product, when you create that link, you can choose where to send somebody after they successfully pay. This is just the default here, but this needs to be set up for that second bit to work. Okay, you'll see what I mean in a moment. So let's just scroll down this page. Let's click on Save. Okay, wonderful. I've saved my preferences. Great. Now, this is the real fun part. Now we're actually going to create our payment link for our product. Um, if you've never done this before, this is great fun. 
it's really exciting creating. In fact, I, I often say after actually making the first bit of money online, creating your first payment link is probably one of the most exciting things. We do this as follows. There's a merchant services link at the top here, or a tab as they call them. We click on that in PayPal. We're now going to create a link for our product. You can create as many links as you like. PayPal keep changing how this page looks. In fact, they changed it only in the last week again. Uh, but somewhere on this page will be something like, let me get my highlighter so you can see this, something like set, uh, start accepting payments. Um, add PayPal buttons to your website, something like that. And it says sell single items, sell multiple items, sell subscriptions, accept donations, etc. We just want to sell single items because we're just selling a single item at the moment on this product. Let's click on sell single items. And as soon as we do, at the next page. Okay, let's, what we're going to do now, this is going to take me about three minutes, okay? We're going to create our PayPal payment link and then we're going to go back to our index page and once we've created this link we're actually going to put that link in our index page so when someone goes to our page and they click on the buy now button they get sent to PayPal and they get charged the correct amount and then they get sent to the download page after their payment is successful. Does that make sense so far? Do you, I, I, we're kind of going backwards a little bit, but that's unfortunately how this kind of has to work. So let's create our payment button. And again, I apologize if you have created a payment button before in PayPal, you will obviously know this. So let's do this relatively quickly. Um, okay, choose your button type, buy now, that's fine. Um, you can have like um, different, op in fact, let's look at the options. You can have a, a shopping cart, which you don't need to worry about, a donation, subscription, buy now let's keep it nice and simple item name what should we call this let's call it what the product is called is it called articles for oops for newbies I have to say I don't like the word newbies <laughs> I don't know about you I've never liked the word newbies um, but I'm only using it here because that's what the the header is is called so let's make it all congruent and make it all look nice the price I've forgotten the price can you remind me how much we said this was was it one million dollars? Uh, Twenty-seven. Thank you. That was right. Twenty-seven. Uh, make sure you select the correct currency. I've seen people make that mistake before. U.S. dollars. Twenty-seven U.S. dollars. Okay. Um, scrolling down here. Now we're not going to customize the button. Uh, that means if you had your own image and you wanted to use that, you can do. But we're not going to. Um, postage was well, no postage because this is a digital product. Um, Okay, everything you can leave this as use secure. Don't worry about any of this. That's it. Pretty much done it. It's very very simple. Uh, step two is optional, and you don't need to worry about it at all. It means you can track the sales. It's really only if you have something that you're selling tangibly in the mail. So we can ignore that. Step three. It says it's optional, but actually it's not. Uh, at least not for what we want to do. So make sure you click on step three here. Step three. Okay, what is this saying? Customize checkout pages. Do you want to let your customer change order quantities? No, you don't. Can your customer add special instructions in a message to you? By default, it says yes. I would choose that. I would change that to no, because you don't really want to be getting into conversations via PayPal payments. It just gets a bit confusing. You've already put your email address on both pages. If someone wants to contact you, that's how they can contact you. Do you need your customer's postal address? No, you don't. Um, right, the next couple of fields are really what are important. Take customer to this, let me just get my highlighter again. Uh, take customer to this URL when they cancel their checkout. I don't really worry about this. If somebody's going to cancel, they're going to cancel. The idea is you could create a page that says something like, oh, I see you cancelled. Are you sure? Sort of thing. Personally, I wouldn't bother with it. It's optional anyway. But this... This is definitely what we do want. Take customers to this URL when they finish checkout. This is the magic button. This, of course, is where we are going to put our download page. This is the whole point of creating this, um, this page, uh, this, this button, rather. So let's get my download page URL again. 
and URL just remember is the technical term for a website address and let's check this box so it's active and let's paste in our download page here it is so let's just confirm now this is important let's just check we have got it exactly right because this is where PayPal will send somebody so if you put an error in here it will error and you'll just get complaints but it is correct and we've checked it online so that's great do you know what that's it let's click create button at the very bottom here we're almost done by the way now what we have and if you've never created a PayPal button before let me just quickly explain what we have here we actually have two bits of code for want of a better word all this technical looking code here this is known as HTML that is computer code for this at the right hand side this buy now button if you pasted that in your web page this is what would appear on your web page and somebody would click on it and it would be clickable and that's great however you might recall in fact let me show you let's go back to our let's go back to composer where's our index page here we go can I just ask can you see composer here I'm looking in composer now can you actually see composer okay yes you can okay wonderful thank you look in composer we've got our own buy now button haven't we this big orange really attractive looking buy now button so it's already there so we don't need to use the, the PayPal default buy now button because we've already got a buy now button so let's go back to PayPal in our case in this case and this is again something that is always confusing with the web business there's often two or three ways to do the same thing as I'm sure you've discovered and therein alone can cause confusion one person might say oh article marketing is you know the future and somebody might say oh it's two years ago you know both technically are right and there's many different ways of doing the same thing creating a PayPal button it is a perfect example of that so we do not use this this code or we do not need this code because we do not need to have this image that PayPal has created instead if we click on this email tab here we will have it's actually another URL here let me click and drag all this and highlight it what we have here is a URL that will send somebody to PayPal you'll see exactly what I mean don't worry if you suddenly kind of lost focus for a second there you'll see exactly what I mean in a second PayPal has created this exclusive URL that's exclusive to you nobody else in the world will have this so let's make a note of this I'm just gonna make a note of this so we have it handy so this is uh, my payment link so this is my exclusive payment link here and I'm seeing a few people in the question window quite rightly say we're gonna link our image in composer to this and if you thought that, congratulations, you're one step ahead of me. That's exactly what we're going to do.